I remember when I, I, I saw My Neighbor Totoro for the first time, it just seemed like the most beautiful, uh, complete, perfect thing. Everyone who watches it, no matter what age you are, like there's something about it that you relate to or that you enjoy getting lost in the world of. Quite challenging, you know, putting an animated film on stage. It's a huge fusion of different crafts and we're bringing the, the expertise of the RSC workshops and crafts people together with the craft of puppet making. Of course, it's very exciting to be a part of this project. And it's a wonderful film and set of characters. And there's an immense responsibility you feel for it to get it right. Toto must be that you want to touch him. You want to fall asleep on his belly. <laughs> it's made like a wig is, like a, a custom wig, so that individual strands are tied on. It's a lot of work, but it had to be right. You know, there's several puppet builders on this, but most notably the Jim Henson Company and the Creature Shop in Los Angeles. And then there's also Mervyn Miller and his company, Significant Object. I think puppetry is really vital to the telling of the story. It, it, it's a story about the imagination, but it's about uh, a family who find the world awakening around them. That whole world needs to breathe and needs to come to life. For the structures and mechanisms involved in the puppets, for me, it's always best when you can be right there making it happen with your own hands, but you can't if it's too high. <laughs> so there is always a mechanism where you're working something either with a pole or a string or a cable to make something happen remotely. There is this spirit of Totoro that exists as an idea who is in the room. Puppetry always is a suggestion of something. You, know, you make it out of cloth and wool, and it looks like something. Well, what it looks like is Totoro. 